Good morning, Zio here, and today we're going to be talking about Sony, PlayStation, and cross-platform, and why they won't cross-platform, because information has come out, and um, I thought it was interesting to check out. So, grab yourself some coffee, sit back, relax, and uh, let's get into it, shall we? So back in 2017, Sony had released um, information, or not released information, but they made statements, right? Because Sony is the one and only company who just refuses cross-platform for, uh, for reasons, right? And they had their reason. Their reason essentially was, think of the kids, think of the children, that sort of thing. When we're, we're, we're talking about a company who uh, had always, I guess, marketed towards older people to begin with right they weren't the system for children uh them microsoft those were the systems that if you were older those were where the system was towards marketed towards meanwhile something like nintendo was more focused on the children right they were marketed towards younger audiences that sort of thing e for everyone 10 and up and uh stuff like that and it hadn't been until recent years that we've seen nintendo sort of break out of that sort of um I guess, um, uh, a label that was placed on them, uh, you know, a label that they willingly placed on them, but still, you know, um, they, they've recently broken away from that, right? You know, you've seen things like zombie U and, uh, um, uh, call of duty and other things make their way to the title or to the title, to the console, <laughs> even if it's a far inferior console to its other counterparts that also have those particular games but sony their basic thing was think of the children right we have a contract and we'll quote uh, jim ryan at the time the head of global sales and marketing um but he said we have a contract with the people who go online with us that we look after them and they are within the playstation uh, curated universe exposing what in many cases are children to extreme influences we have no ability to manage to look after it's something we have to think about very carefully which of course goes back to my uh whole thing when it comes to parents and that's uh parents your damn kids of course if you're if you've got young kids like i do and you want them to not play a thing we have this thing called parental uh parental um filters parental guidance things anyway can't think of what it's called at the top of my head but we do have the ability to set it up to block people you can take my oldest who uh, decided to make his own fortnite account when i was going to make him one to play fortnite and he used his actual birthday and now it won't let him play multiplayer right so uh <laughs> there's that Meanwhile, I had to make the account for my other one, and since I, you know, didn't use his actual birthday, he, they can now go on and play Fortnite online because I allowed them to do that. Of course, I take other steps like disabling voice chat and all this other stuff. So, you know, they, they're not exposed to that certain breed of people out there and have to deal with it for the most part. And unless it's a direct friend of theirs, they can't really talk to anybody. But, um, you know, we have the ability as parents to make that happen. We should be the ones watching our kids. We shouldn't be having companies like Sony have to take that, right? They're, they shouldn't be taking that hit. And that was a weak, weak excuse to begin with when you have Xbox and nintendo microsoft and nintendo at about the same time coming together and going we have crossplay you know we will work together they had a marketing campaign at one point where it was microsoft and sony or i'm sorry microsoft and nintendo sort of being together while sony is a uh, yeah, Sony just can't, right? You know, kind of similar to those uh, Sega does with Nintendo don't kind of kind of deal, except for you know you got the two companies coming together for crossplay. Anyway, so there's this lawsuit going on, right? We've talked about it in the past. It's Epic versus Apple, and there has been an information dump. Apparently, the um, I want to dig into a lot more of that. I just haven't yet, but uh. Apparently, the courts were not ready for this particular case, right? They were not ready for the exposure. They were not ready for the kinds of people who would be involved, listening, watching, that sort of thing. They were not ready for this. And a lot, a lot of information between Apple and Epic 
has been dumped into the wild because you know when you start dealing with evidence and all this other stuff you're dealing with a court uh you know when you can go in and look at the publicly available information that has been submitted by all parties and other stuff this kind of stuff is bound to happen and we have found several things i want to talk more in depth about just the apple portion and the epic portion but right now we're just doing it in relation to sony but you know we've got this here which is a um email list something another that was a correspondent between sony and epic at one point in time that had gone uh, across because uh you know like i said sony refuses crossplay right and uh you know it, it comes up and and it says we love working with playstation and we want to this to be a win-win uh the longer this drags out it will be less so i can't Think of a scenario where Epic doesn't get what we want. That possibility went out the door when Fortnite became the biggest game on PlayStation. And of course, this is back when Fortnite exploded. Everybody wanted crossplay, and eventually, I'm pretty sure Sony eventually did cave. I can't actually remember if they crossplay with Fortnite or not, uh, but they do have some crossplay actually enabled at this point in time. The last time I checked, you still couldn't crossplay. Um, what was it? Minecraft. So. You know, but there are some features where crossplay has been enabled on the PlayStation prompt for various reasons, and we'll get into that. But um, anyway, here's what Epic proposes, right? We give you the data you're asking for, plus the marketing data asked. Uh, you know, selling data. <laughs> That's standard these days. Epic deeply integrates Sony's eSports API into the UE4 as an engine level feature. We market and advertise it as a first class citizens of the engine, maybe E3 announced and we support it in Fortnite. So, you know, giving Sony a lot of love right there. We announce crossplay in conjecture with Sony. Epic goes out of its way to make Sony look like heroes. You get to pick when, where, and how, which is also another good thing. If you know anything about gamers, we do like to, uh, you know, help out companies and pay from companies that treat us right, right? And if you don't, we'll let you know it, it will be known all over the place and people won't buy your product and all this other stuff uh, the only thing you're banking on at that point are the normies to purchase your product which is why you've seen several games out there who are hits but they didn't hit the target they expected to because they essentially ostracized their actual um their actual fans, their actual consumers. The only people who essentially bought it at that point were, I guess you could call the normies who didn't know any better, who just, that's all they do, right? You know, they, they buy this particular game when it comes out yearly and that's all they do. But me, meanwhile, the more hardcore players have sort of dropped off. Uh, you know, you've seen the backlashes with several things from, uh, what was it, Battlefront uh, 2, I think, um, the Star, Star Wars Battlefront 2, is that not what it was, what it was called? I can't remember it's it's been a while when they redid a game that already existed that was pretty good back then and they redid it and then redid it again and they had that insane monetization um, system set up where everything revolved around the monetization they had to backtrack that and then there was another game that was about to release that they had to then go back push it out and redo all that because they had the same monetization scheme because well the fans weren't happy and they dropped it like hotcakes they may have bought the game but they sure as heck were not buying the microtransactions and player um, engagement dropped off a cliff at that point which left uh you know the company to scramble right uh, but yeah we, we've seen things like that happen in the past they continue to happen of course to this day but uh you know if you have a lot of goodwill and stuff as long as you don't squander it like several companies out there have over the years for various reasons like for instance blizzard and the influence that activision has had on blizzard and yes to this day it will still be activision's fault because i think blizzard would have been so much better if activision was never ever involved uh, because you can just go back and look at it and see exactly where things like World of Warcraft started to go downhill, and it was right at the time the Activision uh, merger thing came into play. So, but yeah, you know, you've got crappy companies out there. You've got good companies. You've seen good companies go bad. But anyway, Epic, you know, does all this stuff, right? And then Sony, of course, in a uh, release uh, somewhere 
well, let's see, what was it? When it came to the uh, Epic's flex about Fortnite dominance on the PlayStation, uh, the Sony Senior Director of Development Relations, which is Geo Corsai, I think is how you say that. Um, but yeah, essentially, he said, as you know, many companies are exploring the idea and not single one can explain how cross uh, console play improves the PlayStation business. In other words, how does this make us money? Because um, it's it, we don't know how. Nobody can tell us how this makes us money. And if we're not making money, we're not interested. Which uh, you know sucks because uh, you know you want goodwill with your players. And you know when it comes to buying a game or something, they just don't seem to understand what an impact that can have making a purchase. See, if say I've got my PC here and I have the PlayStation Four over there, and this game comes out right, and it's great. It's a multiplayer game. I love it. It's a uh, something something. We'll make it up, and it's it's an amazing thing. Love it. Right. However, this game launches multi-platform, right? It's on the Xbox, it's on Steam, it's on Epic, it's on GOG, it's on PlayStation 4, it's on the Switch. It's just straight up cross-platform everywhere. And my buddies all own, say, an Xbox, right? Uh, and I'm the only one who has the PC and this is a true story happens a lot because you know everybody else seems to own consoles while I own the PC for the most part uh, but the game of course is cross-platform right you know I can still play with them I have to sign in with say you know the developer is we'll say it's it's epic right we'll just use epic as the example right here because why not epic i need an epic account so what happens is when i sign into the game for the first time booted up it wants me to sign into my epic account for multiplayer and then anyone i've added to my epic friends list or whatnot no matter what system they're on because they too have to sign into the epic account will i'll, I'll have access to them to party up play with things like that right but sony refuses cross play that's the problem right there if i've got to pick between where i'm going to purchase this it's going to be steam by default why because if i pick sony and pick the playstation port up i'm not going to be able to play with my friends because it's not cross-platform right uh, meanwhile if i picked it up on my pc i can still play with them even though they all have xboxes or something and then we all sign into our epic accounts and we have a good time that's one cell less for Sony, because Sony wants to be anti-consumer, and they don't seem to understand how that works. Of course, more information came out as well. This thing here is a, a slide from one of their things that came out during this lawsuit as well, but it's called uh, the cross-platform revenue share. Essentially, what is happening is Sony is um, uh, forcing developers to pay for the ability to have cross-platform on their system and essentially what what their thing is well if you have say a hundred people playing a game right and um 80 percent 80 of those people are on the pc while the other 20 are on the playstation and then the people on the playstation just don't buy anything right but then those 80 all of them buy epic skins right they they buy top tier skins from from the uh you know storefront or whatever and then that goes straight into the pc side of things and sony doesn't see any of that so they are now charging royalties essentially or wanting to charge royalties to people in order for them to uh have that cross platform capabilities which is also another anti-consumer and really scummy thing to do. Um, but that's just in my opinion. We've got an example right down here. If 20% of total Rocket League players were on the PS4, for example, uh, but PlayStation players accounts for 10% of the game's revenue because players buy way more skins on PC or something, Sony presumably thinks it's paying the PSN infrastructure cost for all those players, but not getting the return and should for allowing cross play platform to offset the reduction in revenue. Uh, the game publisher would owe Sony a royalty payment based on the gap between the PS4 player base and the population of PSN revenue or the and the propo proportional PSN revenue population anyway. So yeah, that, that's apparently how Sony's been handling it. They're charging developers. It's, it's 
it's not my favorite thing in the world. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.